Hi, my name is Lisa Weideman. I'll be talking to you today a little bit about the educational philosophies of Jane Addams. Jane Addams was born in 1860 in Illinois. Uh, she was born to an affluent family. Her father was a wealthy businessman. Her mother unfortunately died when she was only two years old, but she became very close to her father during this time, which is why she decided to stay local and go to Rockford College in Illinois for her education. While at Rockford, she went to a church where there were different uh, people from different economic backgrounds, and she soon began not to wear her best dresses because she feared the others would feel badly. She wrote to her father about this inequity and asked what could be done, and he said that it might never be righted for clothes, but people might be equal in things that mattered, such as education and religion. Um, Adam said that these early conversations with her father were what sowed the seeds of her life's work. In 1880, Adams graduated from Rockford College, and she and her father went on a tour of Europe. It was while in Europe that she became aware and appalled at the living conditions of the poor in these large European cities. She wanted to be able to do something about the horrors that she saw, but she soon became aware that her education had not prepared her to take action to correct these ills. The death of Adam's father. Um, happened while on this trip. And um, she then found herself in with an inheritance and a means of making a difference, but no real idea about how to do so. Adams researched about social democracy and equity. And in 1880, Adams and a friend established Whole House, which was a settlement house that would focus on integrating the wealthy and the poor, living together and mutually mutually beneficial arrangement. This was Adams' experiment in social democracy. Adams is considered one of the original pragmatists and progressive educationalists. She was a good friend and close associate to John Dewey and many others from these movements. She didn't see herself as a pragmatist and she denied that she was an educational philosopher and it's often hard to really define and solidify her educational schema. Seeing the difference that education made on the lives of the children who were poor and had immigrated from other countries and had cultural or language barriers, Adams extended her ideals of social democracy to the public education system. She believed that social interaction and integration of people from all social and economic walks of life would strengthen education for all. She believed that the public nature of public school was its greatest gift. Adams worked hard to bring these philosophies into the classroom by fighting to make sure all students had access to education. When she first took up the cause, this wasn't the case, as many um, students from economically disadvantaged homes had to uh, work to help their family survive. Um, Ad Adams was an advocate for and fought to accomplish the right for women to vote. This was important to her because she didn't believe that the child labor would be abolished until women had a say in the matter, and she also advocated for compulsory education to help further motivate compliance with child labor laws and make sure that these disadvantaged children came to school. Another complaint Adams had about the educational system of her time was um, that it was all intellectual and it came from books, but there was no practical real world application to these ideas. What she wanted was for democracy to be in, taught and applied in our concrete everyday experience. Her idea to put these intellectual ideas into action was um, to teach children how to advocate for change. And Adams was the major influencer toward the creation of these social advocacy groups at college and community service to enhance academics in high school. Adams also saw flaws in the models of the business schools of the time, which did the opposite of the wealthy private schools, and they taught students only the skills that were directly applicable to the workplace. Um, Adams believed that the failing of these two opposed systems was that they didn't integrate life and the social contract into education. She believed that life is a teacher and we learn through living together. Bertram C. Bruce critiques Adams' idea of social democracy as idealist, considering that the wealthy are often sent to private schools and uh, districts are frequently segmented along economic and cultural lines. He thinks that the likelihood of people actually brushing shoulders with people from other economic statuses and learning from each other's strengths is very unlikely. How public is public education really, he asks. Yet he believes that Adams would answer that just because we haven't reached the ideal of social democracy in public education doesn't mean it shouldn't be the goal. I believe that Adams has come across an important dichotomy 
um, that could be re related to the duality of the secular and sacred and the difficulty in integrating different aspects of the modern life into a cohesive whole. I believe that her ideal of integration and connection between people and between different aspects of our lives is a key to expanding the relevance of education. Adam says that education at its heart is really about living life as fully as we can. And the more we segment our individual lives and our communal lives, the less we will be able to live the lives we were meant to live. Thank you.